shooting lab rats. Aimpoint gets all scientific to cure shotgun shooting related illnesses. That's the first time in their life where they will have contact with a clay. The Sussex Slam. Larissa is back after Munjack and Rowe. We have news. We have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Shooting crash test dummies, shooting guinea pigs, shooting test pilots. Whatever you want to call them, this cross-section of Scandinavian shooting society is here to be poked, prodded and observed as they embark on what must be the largest independent product trial in the history of sporting shooting. So you're not going to make up these figures. This is not purely an aim point propaganda exercise. Of course it is. Uh, my my uh, <laughs> vice president of the company told me to do that. No, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's like to uh, in the pants. It will be warm for a couple of seconds and uh, then you have lost the market. So what we want to have is actually ambassadors. When they have bought our site, they should spread the rumor that this is something good that you actually should use and that it had have helped them. Translated from Swenglish, what Aimpoint Academy's rifle shooting instructor Eric Ars is explaining is what's the point of launching the new micro S1 red dot site and targeting the whole shotgun market when it'll become clear and cold in those pants that it's not for everyone. And this is what this week's testing will deliver, who it is for and what it can help with. We are a really mixed group, so I, I think Aimpoint will, uh, will have a better understanding uh, of the market. Fr from my perspective, it, it is good. I mean, uh, you can so much easier follow, uh, follow the target in the air, so I like it. Most importantly, are you having a good time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go home. <laughs> the teachers are amazing. I mean, they know exactly what's wrong and exactly what to do. To, uh, to improve your shooting and I'm, I'm just amazed how, <laughs> how, how they can correct you and, and they know it. The whole four-day trial is being independently monitored, photographed and filmed. The 40 successful students applied via the Aimpoint Facebook page and are receiving two days of training on the clay ground. The two instructors are taking 10 students at a time. Five will use the Micro S1, five will not. Some people that don't have confidence in the shotgun shooting will have confidence maybe with the aim point side because that's the first time in their life where they will have contact with the clay. Every single hit or miss is recorded for aim points data analysis. Tomorrow the students will take exactly the same shotgun shooting test they would need to pass for their Swedish hunting license. This rabbit and this going away bird are both part of it. They're going to find four shots, two from right to left and uh, they have a hit a, a white marker and they had to put eight pellets in that one on two shots and then the rabbit turns so it's going from left to right and the same way and they have to put eight pellets in the next rabbit. The second target is a going away clay. You had six clays, 12 shots and you have to hit four of them. If you go and hunt in Sweden and have a Swedish hunting uh, license, then you have to pass this test. These targets at Mamima Yacht have both been assessed and signed off by the Swedish hunting organisation. The shot cam shows what the shooter will actually see through the S1. It provides a reference point and, from our own experience, the position of the red dot on the Micro S1 ensures your head is in a good position on the stock. Aimpoint is the perfect site for driven hunts and we shoot with the red dot site in the same way that we are, you are shooting shotgun. We go from behind, we take a focus point on the animal and we go through and we shoot. And we were thinking, why don't we do a shotgun site? And we made a lot of tests and we come up with a new micro S1 site. 
for this. It's, it's not something you've taken from a rifle and stuck it on a, on a shotgun. This is a completely new product. Yeah. We actually optimized the micro series for the shotguns. So we changed the optical axis. We changed the whole housing. Now actually the mount is integrated into the house. And we have uh, interchangeable base plates, carbon fiber reinforced base plates, where we can mount it on nearly every shotgun. That has got a ventilated rib, that is important. Schools that have, have uh, tested it for us, they said this is the tool for us to get people to understand what they should do, because when they can say, do like this, do like this, do like this, but the person, they don't understand it. But when they get the Micro S1 on, they actually get the reference and, and they understand what they are telling them, and it works really good. You might remember Mamimi Yacht from our film last year when Tim visited the facility to see boarhounds being trained. After a hard day's shooting, the students get a chance to see the work being done here. There are plans in place to start training dogs on moose later this year. Day two and the test begins with the rabbit. Every shot is assessed and confirmed by the shooter. Then it's the going away target. I could see the red dot just looking with two eyes and it's like, I'm on the right place. It helped me just when I was about to fire. You have done everything right, just pull the trigger. I felt it like that. By this point, the instructors are feeling a little battle weary. They again are independent, but open minded. Olaf has worked and shot in the UK. He knows that it will take a cultural shift for the red dot to be accepted, but admits there are situations where it will help. Now you are here supposedly as being completely impartial. Can you confirm that this is the case? This is the case. Yeah, that's the case. I have found over the couple of days that I've been here specific targets where I think that it's helpful. Um, I think I've sort of found targets where I think it's more in the way, uh, but I haven't tried it enough on t longer targets to, to be able to, to say for myself. But for, for, for ground game, it's absolutely perfect. Hundreds of shots are taken over the four days by the 40 students, and Aimpoint now has a mountain of data to analyse. They don't see it as revolutionary, but it can certainly help your mount, your muscle memory, it can work as a training aid, and possibly deliver to the die-hard clayhound some crucial extra targets. For more from Aimpoint, visit aimpoint.com. And we will be conducting our own experiments throughout the year to see whether the Micro S1 can cure the sick or indeed raise the dead. Now somebody else who needs raising from time to time, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. So how should we save the British Nightingale and Woodpecker? We need to shoot deer. That's the conclusion of a team commissioned by British Environment Ministry DEFRA following a call to examine the causes of declining woodland birds like the nightingale, marsh tit and lesser spotted woodpecker. They say that fallow, roe and muntjac deer have destroyed two thirds of the foliage below head height in English forests, which provides cover for woodland birds that nest on or near the ground. Do you fancy a weekend up to your elbows in guns and shooting? The Northern Shooting Show takes place on Saturday and Sunday, the 7th and 8th of May in Harrogate, North Yorkshire. There's an online early bird ticket offer of £10 per ticket. Visit bit.ly forward slash NSS tickets. A vegan designer is making sporans from roadkill. Emma Willits makes lots of fashion accessories from donated corpses, but she feels that her dapper dead business does not encroach on her beliefs as a vegan as the animals are already dead and she's just making use of them, otherwise they'd be wasted. Staying with vegans and the Australian Vegan Animal Justice MP has been found feasting on fish 
in a Japanese restaurant. Vegan MP Mark Pearson was seen eating oysters and snapper at a Sydney restaurant. After he was outed online, he apologised to angry activists and told them that he has strayed. Bertie pointed out that he was not solely elected by vegans. And finally, after the Canadian state of Ontario banned the annual snapping turtle hunt, a former ranger has snapped. John Chisholm, a retired game warden, told CBC he was appalled at the decision to end the hunt. He had a nice barbecue and it, uh, it was delicious. And uh, I was going to have another one this year, but I guess I'm not now. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, Larissa is yet to be helped onto an aeroplane, but she's getting closer to Gatwick. She's out with Viscount Sporting in the Sussex countryside. Hunting TV star Larissa Switlick is on a deer management mission with Sussex stalker Darren Fizz Fizakili. She's helping him out as part of an annual management plan, starting with cull roebucks and finishing with the fallow buck cull. The roebuck season opened in the UK on the 1st of April. They are also keeping an eye out for suitable muntjac while they are out and about. It's going to be a busy one and Larissa is hoping to tick a few deer off her list. It's pretty cool because... Uh... Honestly, I have my eyes on a muntjac. I don't know why, they're just so cool looking. I heard they're delicious, want to try it out. And they're actually kind of a pest here, like rodents I hear. They're everywhere, but I heard they're difficult to hunt because they're always on the move and they're really small. So I just love learning new styles of hunting. And, you know, it's a little different. It's my first time hunting in the UK, so I'm excited to get after it. The cover here is ideal for munchak with regen, small and thick trees. This is good holding ground for the deer. The only way to get one in sight is to call and pull them out with the buttolo. We're just in the thick woods, but no munchak around the play, so I think we're going to go head out to some field. But we got roebuck and also fallow buck in season as well, so we're going to try to get the slam here. See if we can get all three in the next two days. That'd be really cool. But just as we set off, we hear a muntjac bark, so Fizz makes the call for us to go back in. We're going back to plan A. We just heard a muntjac bark. So we're going to go head back into the woods and try to pursue it, see if we can get on them. We pulled in, because we were literally before. We were only sort of 80 odd metres over there. Just, just bumping it yeah like and spooking, spooking it. it yeah that was just i love this is why i love hunting because it just you just never know what's going to happen and you think you mastered change. it well no i thought we gave up oh we no we never gave up never gave up that was really cool well done. great I love it okay this is so neat what a unique looking animal oh. has an incredible coat beautiful absolutely beautiful it's almost like a very very big rabbit fluffy tail but that's a perfect shot the rest are really well placed well done right I'm proud of that yeah it's a very great. good shot well I saw she was kind of on the move just just yeah she just was just kind of on steady. the move so when she stopped for that split, split second, second. I, I took the shot perfect that's a good result there is still time for fallow and row we aren't out to shoot as many deer as possible. There is a reason why all three species can be on the cards today. Yeah, we have a, we have a, a large cull on this estate because there's a lot of damage done to arable crops and also a lot of forestry um, damage as well here with uh, particularly the roe and the muntjac do quite a lot, of, a lot of damage on small saplings. 
Because it is April and the sun is up higher and the weather is warmer, the deer are starting to enjoy grazing in the open patches. We see a roebuck grazing in the sun, but Larissa cannot take the shot as the backstop is not good enough. We break for the afternoon and change a state. We drop off Larissa to rest as she's been hunting non-stop since arriving in England and we head out with Fizz. This is actually the only time of year, um, April, that I would be out at one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's just because the weather's warming up and it's a lovely day, nice and sunny. Um, the deer are out trying to get a bit of sunshine. Um, also through the winter months, what happens is the deer's metabolism actually slows down because there's less food. Now that it's warmed up, you see these crops have really got away. We see a big group of fallow in the open field and stalk up to them, but they wind us and move on. So that's a, a classic example of them just being out, enjoying this weather in the middle of the day, early afternoon. But, um, before the wind swung round, came straight over the back of our heads. One doe's head popped up and she just took the, popped them into the wood. There were a couple of young bucks in there that we could have taken if they'd stood in the right place, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't safe, so um, that pod has got away for now. As we return to the truck, there is a classic deer stalking moment as the whole day changes course. We turn a corner and Fizz sees a deer head sticking up over the crest of the hill. I just said to you a few minutes before, and it's probably the most likely bit of this wood to find something. A deer love it down in here. And uh, we just managed to see one just with its neck and head um, visible. So I've managed to take a headshot and it's another it's a fallow buck. We pick up the girls on the last stalk of the day and look to complete what Larissa calls the slam, one of each of the local deer in season. It starts off well as we see a roebuck from the window of the car. Yeah, I mean, we're on the, our afternoon hunt, um, evening time, and just about the right time where these deer get up and start moving again and feeding. Actually driving in here, we spotted a roe deer buck, a uh, pretty nice one too, but he kind of was unweary and ran off into the woods. We don't get back onto that roebuck, but continue stalking into another area. Then we see a roebuck just sticking its head over the brow of a dip. Down. That's what I like to see. Absolutely. Straight out. Oh, thank you, God. Very we officially stock. opened our roebuck call for 2017. I have. <laughs> First roebuck of the season. That's a good way of yeah. doing it. Totally, you know, one good. shot, dropped on the spot, humane, perfect. Thank well you. Well done. That was beautiful. So that closes up the deer management for the day. Fizz is happy with his roebuck curl, which will continue throughout the rest of the season. You can contact him via viscountsporting.com. Meanwhile, for Larissa, it is, of course, Awesome. The Sussex Slam, that ought to be in the local tourist literature. Now I'd like to say a big thank you to viewer Michael Honor who started making dog whistles and he sent this one to me. Thank you very much Michael. <coughs> I use it to call in some videos now about hunting and shooting for Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Waikara Moana is after Red Deer in New Zealand, part 122. Good effort. A 2506 round drops a big young deer in his tracks for a Kiwi venison recovery job. In the thick of the 2017 fallow rut in Australia, Merton Outdoors takes a good buck. It's a short afternoon hunt. Staying in Oz, Peter Nobes shoots seven foxes and a hare with his ticker 204. The first fox is a creditable 180 metres. Point of Impact TV is out after rabbits in the UK with another small calibre. It's a CZ455 in 17HMR and he is shooting out to 170 yards. Brett Vaughan sees rabbits as a good way to teach his grandson gun safety straight shooting and put some meat on the table. He takes young Leighton Jack rabbit hunting. At the big game end of the scale, international shots Alberto Rizzini and Maria Elena are on a magnificent hunting trip after Oryx in South Africa, sponsored by Browning. There's a bit of Dutch in the opener to this, which is 
is fine if you speak it, but then, as I don't, Top Port Fleet gets into the goose shooting, as challenging as ever in this big open country. And finally, Robert Giroux is out with an unusual bird for us Brits, an Aplomado falcon, a slender, long-winged and long-tailed bird from the Americas the size of a small peregrine. This one's called Clyde. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. We're back on the clays with Clay Sports and all the action from last weekend's Essex Masters. Presented by Peter Wilson, we speak to the competitors and organisers of this impressive shoot, as well as catching up with winner George Digweed. We also go behind the scenes at Oakhead Shooting Ground as they host a registered shoot. We have a roundup of events in the clay shooting world and Peter speaks out about the Olympics dropping his clay discipline double trap and what he expects the ISSF to do about it. There is a threat, and that threat is that our sport will be replaced by laser in the future. That's not all, there's a new episode of Airheads out. We find out about a possible new Olympic shooting sport, Target Sprint. It combines athletics with air gunning, and training is taking a pace across the UK. Plus, we are back at Oak Edge to see just how far you can break a clay with an air gun. Click on the link to watch it. Well, that's it from us this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, or pop your email into our register page, and we'll contact you with our weekly newsletter about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>